Okay, um, I'm going to start. I saw a presentation once, but before I say that, I'll say I'm Michael. Um, I, I would define myself as interested in stuff and anything beyond that, what I've done or haven't done or claim to have done and not done is not relevant to this presentation. However, I'm very open, I'm very honest. If you ask me a question about my background, I will give you too, inform too much information, actually. I'll tell you about everything to do with my life, even if it's asked publicly. But I don't think it's relevant other than that. Now. I was saying, I watched a YouTube video and there was a guy who was speaking similar to me in terms of volume and all the comments below were saying, why is he shouting at the audience? And seriously, I'm not shouting at you. The more excited and passionate I become, never walk in front of your own slides, the more noise I'll make. So it's an excess of passion. It's not, I'm shouting at you or ranting at you. Now, creativity. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about creativity, but before we get into that, I need to set the scene and the context. So, hopefully the technology will not let me down. I'm really concentrating on what organizations currently are. That's going to drive us nuts. Um, <laughs> what organizations currently are. If it's not your organization, that doesn't matter. You can go out of the room and say, my, oh, it's great working for my organization. What Michael said isn't true of my organization. More creative type organization. And then how we might foster creativity within the context that it's absolute garbage talked about how creativity occurs. So for example, I've heard people say, oh, we've got a space over there. That's where people go and be creative. It's, it's just never going to happen. So, how's life and how is your work? Now, I am going to ask you questions. It's too soon because you don't know as well enough and you don't realize I'm really approachable. You can say anything you want. And if we screw everything up, it doesn't matter. This presentation that I've got is totally improvised. It might suck. Or on the other hand, it might work really well. That's the nature of improvisation and creativity. I've got a slight structure, but not too much. So I'm going to give it a shot. How's work in terms of who gets up on a morning and thinks, I cannot wait to get to work on Monday? No. One, two, three, four, sometimes five, six. Wow, and some of you have got the bosses here as well. All right. <laughs> Who says, I love work so much, I'm going to work Saturdays and Sundays as well, free of charge? Anybody? All right. So if I was to say, what's the problem here? Give us some responses, seriously. I had a great chat with, I've forgotten your name already, Priscilla, Priscilla before we came in. And she was really open and honest. And I want you to be the same. So what is it about work that's maybe not so great? What bugs you? What irritates you? What's a pain in the neck? Communication. <laughs> communication. So the communication's not very good in some organizations where you've worked. In terms of what? Um, they perhaps interact and sharing information with you. All right. So information's not shared appropriately. So straight away, there's limited opportunity for collaboration. If me and you collaborate with this person, it's immediately the communication is a bit more fulfilling than when we start detesting each other because you haven't got some information that I should have given you. So there's a creativity issue, I would argue. And just as a point, creativity, if we live a creative life and we endeavor to seek creative solutions, it impacts on our leadership style and it impacts on us as individuals. So everything I talk about today, you can be selfish and it's about you as an individual or it's about you as a leader. All right, give us some more things or I'll, I'll give you a little prompt. Does anybody in the room carry out procedures where you know it's a complete waste of time but you've got to do it anywhere? How many? Well, definitely me. Ah, so now we're getting somewhere. How many people do measurements or collect numbers in a certain way and you think these numbers are just garbage so quite a few now if i was to say i see a problem of modern day organizations as 
this. But first of all, I am not saying we don't need any organisation. We clearly do. Health and safety procedures, for example. But what organisations do, and managers like me and you, or employees on the end of it, like me and you, what happens is we have a, an approach, or we are under the influence of, it's got to be rational. I saw on LinkedIn the other day it said, in God we trust, all others must bring data. <laughs> After I'd finished crying, because I'm like, no, not the numbers, not the numbers. It doesn't have to be the numbers all the time. And other types of things is, oh, we've got to have systems and procedures. And there seems to be no end to man and woman leadership tendencies to bring in a procedure to tackle a problem that doesn't need one. Bring in a measurement system and evaluative criteria that is imposed on you or you impose it on others that is not necessary. And it compartmentalizes us. It takes any type of deviation from the norm, their norm, organization's norm, and it just really takes us where we're always number crunching and numbers are impacting on us. And a managing director of a really creative company, a guy called Nardis Coopers, an ex-skateboarder, said they crunched the life right out of me with the numbers. And he left the company. He's very wealthy. And I, I really like that saying. And what happens is <clears throat> it crushes us. It crushes our soul. It crushes our ability to create anything because we're too busy doing the mundane. I hate the mundane. I love the creative life. But I recognize some mundane's got to be, got to be done. But every time somebody brings in a procedure, they never get rid of one. It's always an extra one. And if they're bringing in new systems and procedures, how long does it take them to get the right system and procedure? Because I've been enduring this now for like, how old am I? 53. I know I look years younger. Um, but, uh, so however long I've been working, I've been enduring new procedures all the time. Have you not got it right yet? So anyway. I'll not go bang on too much about that. So what happens is our lives become rigid and repetitive, um, compartmentalized, mundane, and just say the words forever and ever. Um, and we're almost under control. And in your industry, there'll be huge degrees of that and lesser degrees of that, depending on the look of the organization you work for. Now, I think when we become this organized, we become robot-like, and we take something that is rich and nice, and the ability of me and you to interact, and me and you to interact, and so on and so forth, and we just crush the life out of it, and we trade something good and rich, communication, just a bit, of, just give us a bit of space. If I use a call center example, just give us 10 seconds before the next call comes in that and talk to you now and then. Well, but that costs money. Well, it does not cost money when people are leaving the centre because they cannot take the calls coming in non-stop. Now, I'll say right up, I don't know anything about call centres. I have worked in one, actually, uh, for a very brief period of time. But we need some space. We need some space to create because call centres will be out of business by other organisations with the space to create something new. So I think we create something valuable Interaction, space to create for nothing, for a few more dollars, perhaps. Um, everything we do seems to be what we did yesterday, and we're just closing off thought. And if we close off thought, we close off richness. Now, the reason I keep glancing at my watch is not because I'm bored, it's because I'm on a tight time scale, uh, and I'm bang on, so I'm happy. You think I've done this before? On my notes, I put, this slide, linger, because this is like the key bit. A lot of creativity myths. One of the creativity myths is that there's just certain type of people who are creative. That's not true. I'm going to do me Bobby Robson, the old football manager impression here. So I saw him do this, and I thought, oh, that's great. You're creative, I know you are. You're creative, I know you are. You're creative, I know you are. 
and he went right around the room to little kids telling them that they were going to be great footballers like Gaza, who was famous at the time. I just thought, that's a really nice thing to do. So, great, I'll linger on this slide. Creativity, anything you read, I will argue, will say, for organisations, creativity is the driver of success. So whatever's popular or being done today will be obsolete in the future by somebody who does it more creatively. And some things are quite frightening. I believe that we could get together at the end of this session and change the way the high street looks. May Walk past a fashion shop and look in the window. They've got the same dummies, if that's the correct word, mannequins, that's the word, mannequins with the same clothes and no heads on, demonstrating the suits and the, I don't know what you call women's apparel, I do apologise, suits, all right. Uh, the women's apparel showing, and I think, can they not at least stick a head on the dummy? There's no creativity. Can they not give it a video screen that's changing or something? and all the knitwear is stacked on shelves and the shoes are on a thing that... Give us something different, for goodness sake. Now, I know some companies are doing that. The reason I believe that retailing, just one daft example, that I know even less about retailing than I know about call centres, is people are so busy bogged down with mundane rubbish, leaders and managers and employees, nobody even thinks, well, could we not just put a... At Hollister, they nearly did it. They've got this fancy um, picture. Nearly, get it moving a little bit now. And then that might be a little bit more creative than what we've had. So there's a lot, and you see this all the time. So drivers of success, it's inherently developmental for, for leaders. Creativity, which I'll define in a minute, is new thought. If you have new thought, you can bring multiple perspectives to any problem that you are presented with. And that's at an individual level or an organisational level. All right? Now, this is my favourite bit. If anybody watches, Michael Jackson, you know that he always does this when he pops onto a stage. Like that. And I always think that's how creative we are. I should have a box that I can pop out of so when you came in, there's nobody then. <laughs> I do that, but it never happens. We're still in the 1960s, the way we present. Slides. Now, this is a bit I like, and I'm going to do it on the stage, because whenever I do it, my wife goes, please, tell me you didn't do that in front of a load of people. I go, Lindsay, my hat would just came out. <laughs> Creative endeavor is whoosh inducing. You know, that if you ever do something creative, or you even read something, oh, oh it's changed me life. It's almost like a eureka moment, and you feel different, you feel fantastic for a split second. And the only way I can describe the whoosh feeling that creative endeavor gets you is not to see it, but to dance it. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> not to see it, but to act it. And, I'll, and you know where it's from when you see it, but I'm going to do it anyway. If I undertake something creative, or you do, the feeling we get when there's that eureka moment is this. And it's fantastic. And if you doubt it's fantastic, even mimic that move in the privacy of your own home tonight. It feels fantastic. And it's got a proper psychological name called flow where time and space and thought stops and you're in the moment and, oh, it's fantastic. Now, I, I don't know whether that's from the Wolf of Wall Street or Titanic. I'm not copying it for that reason. It's because it really dramatically, to me, feels good and explains it. Right, I'm not going to linger anymore because I need to crack on. All right, so, creativity defined is not Normal definitions like novel and useful. Anything can be useful to somebody. Most things might be new. Actualization of the unknown means this, that you will think something that you've never previously thought ever. And where did that come from? And when we do that, we've actualized the unknown. So it can be new thought on a commercial level or it can be on an individual level. It's exceeding what currently we have to think something different. And then I'm going to crack on 
Oh, well, you've got to discover, discovery might lead to it, but discovery's not enough. So I've discovered you and you today. That's not going to be life changing in of itself. But when we collide a few ideas, that might give us new thought. So, and I think creativity, new thought, multiple perspectives to bring the problems. So I'm cracking on now, right? Because what you want to know, I believe, and I wish I had three hours is, yeah, but, but how do we do it? So, if we are creating space for not being over-organized, basically we'll allow in our organizations chaos, spontaneity, improvisation, um, things to emerge. And to do that, we need certain things in place that I will get to. And if we do start having spaces, because all organizations really have us organized, we're only asking for a little bit of space. It seems like a reasonable request. It'll be developmental to the employees. They'll get the whoosh feeling, so they'll like going to work. I've got to be honest, when I go to work, well, I don't even consider I work, actually, so... Because I feel that every day. If I don't get that feeling 20 times a day, there's something wrong with life. It's beyond pleasure. Pleasure, hagen dazs ooh, that's pleasurable. This is deep fulfillment, but it's not about me. This is what creatives tell us. All creatives explain this whoosh feeling. So, I'm back on track. Right, now this is a dodgy one. This is the way creative endeavor makes us feel, and this is what the suggestions that follow this slide that might us allow lives to be led in this way. If the technology works, Now, basically, I'm just trying to describe the feeling that our employees will get if we give them some creative space and room and all the other things I'm about to say, if we give them that, if we allow it, if we allow ourselves it. It started off by saying, I'm in heaven day and night. Does anybody know that quote's from? It's the end of a quote, of quite a distasteful quote when I think about it by somebody very famous. He says something at the end, if you're a man and you're over the age of kind of 40, you might know, and he says, so I'm in heaven day and night. If I mimic the accent, well, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was describing his life as a young lad, and he said, I'm in heaven day and night after describing his life. Now, there's a guy called Philip Petit, who is a creative person who walked between the Twin Towers in the 1970s. And he does lots of talks. If you, if you check him out on YouTube, saying similar stuff to what I'm saying is really good, and I want to use his image, but because it was 1974 when he did it, it was grainy. So I just used kind of a more up-to-date version. It's fake bar, obviously. Now, I'm going to try and get a little bit of collaboration, because I've said enough. I'm thinking I'm behind schedule, but now I'm miles ahead of schedule, so that's good. So we'll see what we've got. So show me what you've got. Right, so, what concrete actions can we do to get creativity? I'm going to give a concrete action and then people go, yeah, yeah, but tell us how to do it. Well, you tell me how to do it. Why do I have to do all the work? So, the first one is give people freedom. So seriously, you, need, you can relax. I'm not going to say, how do we give people freedom? Because then you're going to feel bad. I don't want people to feel that. The, the nearest I would get is, I would say, all that row there, how might we give employees freedom to create? If not necessarily in the industry you're in, in the next one. Or if not necessarily the position you're in when you're promoted. Or if you are 
I don't even know the terminology because I cannot accept the conventional wisdom of ground level frontline staff. They're just all, we're all colleagues. If you're a ground, ground level colleague, they know what the need to be given freedom from, but us leaders and managers, we, f we don't know that because some of us never taught them. So, who's going to go first? How might we give some employees freedom? We've got loads of time, that's cool. Give us a suggestion. I dare you. Right. Watch this. I meant to feel really tense and nervous because nobody will talk to us. It doesn't have to be like that. It, we can just chill and laugh. Now, let's see who would get the job when they come to the organisation that's offering them a huge salary. The first four candidates are these. So we'll give you a few minutes. And then the interview question is, what can we do to give our employees a little bit more freedom from their currently structured role in life in our organisation? So we'll see who might get the job in a minute. Same question for you three. Same question for the next row and the next and the next. Get into twos or whatever, because I'm going to come to four people in a minute and say, let's see if you'll get the job based on the interview question. You three. All right, so give it a go. Just get with somebody. How might you create space for employees to be freer in what they do? Don't linger on the word create space. If you want to move along, you can. Come on, I dare you. I dare you. Well done. Thanks very much for helping us out. I'm so confident in the ability of this group that in the interview we ask the question and we don't usually get a like a 10 minute pause. Usually people answer. So we'll give it a go. Pick out three people who you want to answer the question, how might you create freedom for employees? Anybody you want. Okay. Oh, she's up for the floor. <laughs> good. Come this way, come this way. Come this. Watch, watch the step. All right. Um, this way. All right. The Perfect. Gent the gentleman on the back row. Yeah, he looks really intelligent. Yeah, I understand why you. No, no, you. You know who you are. All right. On the back row. Perfect. All right. So you and your three or four colleagues next next to you. Thanks very much. You can have a seat. There. Put my feet in later. Thanks for that. How might we create a little bit of space for people? Freedom from anything. Perfect. That's quite an easy one, but you're definitely getting the job at the moment. So give them some time. So we know that companies like 3M and Google and people like that say, a day a week and work on anything you want. That's nice. I would argue it's not enough, but it's better than nothing, isn't it? We're going to have to do baby steps with this. Perfect. Give them a project where it releases them from their current mundane. So stop there. So now we've got a strong set of candidates for the job. All right, we'll go next three. How might we create a little bit of freedom? Oh, good for you. <laughs> She's having this job. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah. I haven't got beyond, I didn't know where you were looking there because I'm thinking, what's wrong with me eyes? That I'm looking at the back and you think I'm looking at you. So I, I, I'm sorting out my me, me appearance. I'm thinking I'm sure I'm all right in that sense. Um, so I completely missed what you said. Say it again. Uh, give them a voice. Eh? So give them a voice, a forum that they can drop it in. It doesn't have to be any day, any time that anything comes to them that they can go to. Really. Love it. And if you're sitting there going, well, we do that. It's got to be sincere. I used to, you know, we all have, um, oh, you can come in at our meeting frontline staff. These are the managers. So when you come, and after 10 minutes, we say, you'll have to leave for this part of the meeting. It's confidential. What we're basically sending the message there is, you can't be trusted, but these can. I had that happen to me in reverse. I went along as a participant, as a 37-year-old man, 
a student rep, because I took a year off work, they got to a certain part of the meeting, they said, you'll have to leave now and wait outside, we'll go and discuss students. As I walked out, I looked at various people, I thought, that's strange, because I know he blabs it, sorry, he blabs it, she blabs it, she blabs it all over, I know I keep things confidential. <laughs> and yet they've asked me to come out. So, so yeah, give people a sincere voice, brilliant. So now we've got some candidates for the jobs. Now, paranoid about the Rocky Balboa, can't even say it, accent, it gets worse. Because as a presenter, you want a nice voice to speak, and you want some lovely handwriting. Well, I haven't got the voice, and I definitely, the handwriting's worse. This is the best writing that I've ever done in my life. Seriously, I hope the cameras do not pick this up. So, honestly, that's, that's the best. So, I've just given a couple of suggestions. Free them from tasks. Ask ourselves, what procedures can we bin? So, these are just examples. I kind of cover them all. Um, do we really need that quality system? Apologies to all quality system people in the room. My experience, it doesn't make me right, is quality system takes so long to uh, implement and a day or two, it absolutely ruins the quality of the organisation every single time. But maybe it's just I'm useless at that. Um, all right, so what else have I got? Uh, yeah, free somebody from measurables in terms of do we really need that performance measurement survey that is performing, is performing, is measuring your performance. Measure somebody's performance and it might actually kill their ability to take a risk. Measure my performance today. Did he engage the audience? Well, next time I get in front of an audience, if I know that you're measuring us specifically on that, I might go, I'll stick to what I know will work. And I've just reminded myself of something that I'm going to do in a minute. And I'll not try anything new. And if I never try anything new, I'll never develop and I'll never go, ah, oh, again in my life. So some of these performance measurements, they should free me from, free you from, because it may give you some space. Right. Now, next question. I've got about 12 on here. I'm going to try and do three or four together. I'm just, the reason I was looking quizzical, if that's the right word, I'm amazed I found that, because <laughs> I put things down. All right, how might you support your frontline staff? Or how might you as staff, employees, we're all employees of somebody, how might we be supported to be more creative in our endeavours? So same routine as last time. 30 seconds to come up with an answer. And you'll be picking the group. So you're off the hook. Uh, who'll answer? All right, 30 seconds. How might you support employees to be more creative? Creative being trying to get ideas that result in new thought, new ideas, new whatever. Do you want to come on the stage or not? I don't mind. Go on, yeah. good. <laughs> I'd say you've got it to one, but with your shoes, you know. All right, let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got. Pick any, any person you want, and then I'll expand it out a bit. I like All right, so it's you three. All right, have a seat. Thanks very much. All right? Give support, and we've heard some of these before, and you might be saying, mmm, loads of companies do that. There's different mechanisms of reward, and so it was said, reward people with good ideas. I'm going to give you shock horror. If I work for your company, and you say, put your good idea into this system, and if we select your good idea, we'll give you a free overhead projector. <laughs> Seriously. Why would I give you my fantastic idea that your company's going to make millions from, or even thousands from, when all I get is overhead projector? So let's make the rewards big. So I like that. 
Personalize it, if it's sincere, that does work. All right, so now we've got somebody for this particular job. Pick any, any group you want. They've already been contributing, so pick somebody over there. All right. I'm just trying, Priscilla, yeah. Priscilla's group, how might we support employees? Can I just check, has my watch stopped? Is it um, 10 to 3? Yeah. Wow. Time goes really slow when you're having a really good time, apparently. <laughs> um, all right. We talk about uh, giving a member a start project. Nice and loud, because I'm right over here. Perfect. That'll do for me every day of the week. In fact, I have to give you my what I call the mull and whoosh. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> All right, who was it? The, the mull and whoosh only works once. <laughs> so Rodney Mullen's a skateboarder who just, he made a noise once on something I was watching and I thought, and I, I, I thought I was copying it. And then when I went back to watch it later, he doesn't do anything like what I was doing. So, in a really stupid way, my new thought used an idea by Rodney Mullen and collided it. Actually, I'm telling the truth with Michael Jackson. Because if you watch Michael Jackson, Men in the Mirror, which I wish I'd bring it up, there's a bit where it's going, whoo, whoo, and he keeps turning, going, whoo, whoo, to the people. <laughs> that, so, the, Mullen, Jackson, collision of ideas. This is how creativity occurs. Collision of ideas. There's loads of other ways. So all these things that I'm putting up are a means. No, oh, it's there. <laughs> a means of creative. Now, this is a one that I really do want. I love the idea of the lone wolf. So you know when they say, oh, the classic interview question, isn't it? Um, do you work best as an individual or a team? Oh, come on. Is that the best you can do? We know that people are going to say, I like working best as a team, but sometimes I can work on my own initiative. The question's just waste of time. Everybody knows the answer. Well, I like the idea of the lone wolf, somebody who locks themselves away for 25 years and then comes out of the hills and stuns the world with their ideas. So I hear collaboration. But I have to say, it absolutely works every single time, every day of the week. I know if I take U6, and this is what I think you should do, you say, Michael, you just say, shut up, get out. The problem is this, the ideas that they came back with would just blow my mind. I've done it thousands of times. And the good thing about collaborative uh, creativity, it doesn't need any level of education, it doesn't appear to need any level of inherent creativity, which is a myth anywhere, just people's diverse backgrounds collide and it's amazing what they come up with. So collaboration is absolutely banging. Um, environment. I'm not going to do that one because we know create a nice environment and it, people are more likely to be, you know, receptive to uh, doing creative type work. This is the one that I really want to go with. For me, creativity is the actualization of the unknown, as I previously said, not my definition, two philosophers, <laughs> Deleuze and Guattari. But how we get the actualization of the unknown is collision of ideas via discovery. Discovery on its own won't work. Discovery without freedom, support, collaboration, and environment won't work. And I've just realized, and I'm going to stop there, and I'll put the others on, because I think I'm doing the question and answer bit now, <laughs> and I've just gone, oh, no, that's why I had so long. Right. Any questions you want, I've just given you a taster. I'm going to put the other items on there, and if you want, Made explore the specifics of all these. Always leave them wanting more. That's what they're at. Beg these to get me back, and I'll do it again, and I'll concentrate on the other ones. You needn't worry, I wasn't going to do them all. It's impossible. 
And one of their men is sitting smirking behind the cam camera there. So he's your go-to man. All right, any questions you want, just ask. And I'm going to go really quiet so you go, oh, let's go back because nobody's asking questions. Hey! Four M's. Men in the... Uh, oh, I started off with a sexist one strip. <laughs> just to prove. It stands for Men, Money, Machinery and Materials. But I, I, I cannot, as a committed feminist who's read lots of Naomi Wolf, I cannot go along with that. So money, we men, is the new M. I meant to just put the M there for I did the thing. So it's just resources, basically. We've got to give resources for creative endeavour to get these collisions of ideas. Thanks very much. You're the top person to dear for the courage you showed there. I do appreciate that in a non patronizing way. Next question. <laughs> Come on. Pixar Pictures, 100%. There's a book called um, Creativity Inc. Seriously, it's quite a low level book in terms of it's not difficult to read. I don't mean that patronizingly at all. It's a nice, leisurely read. They use, or the, it's the managing director, Ed Patmel. He uses high-level concepts in the most simplistic way, and he shows how Toy Story, really good creative idea, the world's first animated, uh, sorry, computer-generated uh, movie, is the word I'm trying to grasp for. They give people space to create but they need loads of procedures because they're a huge company with something daft like 30,000 staff. It might be even more than that. So Pixar Pictures. Another company is a guy called Ricardo Semler who basically says to the employees, just do what you want. Just tell us what you want. And it is that extreme. And they say, well, I'll come in at 2 o'clock and I'll not come in the rest of the week. There is some boundaries, obviously, if somebody just wasn't showing up at all. But Semco, Ricardo Semle, if you've heard of him, check him out. He's a really interesting guy. Um, next question. Actually, A O, the White Goods Call Centre offering. I saw a presentation by one of their people the other day, and they're doing quite some quite creative things. Might be only small bits, um, but giving staff the power to kind of apply to customers on Facebook in any way they want. So I to say things like, hi bud, how you doing? <laughs> My street talk isn't, as, <laughs> isn't very good, is it? Uh, I need to talk some, oh anyway, I'll stop them there before I dig myself into a hole. Uh, I can't even remember the question and who asked it? Who asked the question? <coughs> Anybody? Was, it your, was, I, was I still answering that? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Right, when you, this is becoming. Becoming is the same as flow. We become anew and we get that ha, ah, and then I see the world differently from, from there on. So if we embed becoming, I'm basically saying in another way, we've got to embed creativity in organizational routines. Like all the suggestions you give, that's a nice move. <laughs> I bet nobody noticed it. <laughs> um, uh, so becoming is where we enter a room as one person and we leave as another. You must have had that experience yourselves multiple times because you've interacted with some, somebody, you've found something, you've collided an idea, and you see the world differently from that point on. Yeah. We go back to work tomorrow, presumably, and some of the grind is still there, isn't it? Yeah. I'm, I don't think I'm on my own there, am I? No, it's unanimous. You know, I, I know somebody who's a bit more radical than me, and people go out of the room and they go, well, that was OK, but you kind of do that at work. Baby steps. I'm doing my acts of resistance, whereby when somebody tries to impose a procedure on me, I try to resist it. If people try and measure my performance in my industry, the measurement performance, they say things, they give you a questionnaire and say things like, did he cover the topic? Did he do this? Did he do that? They never 
never say, never, I'm joking and I'm not. Do you line his leg like that at 15 minutes past two? And the answer is, yes, I did. Did you not realize it? But I can guarantee it had an effect that makes you view this presentation positively. They can't measure that. Some things cannot be measured proceduralized. We have to resist as best we can. And be selfish in your organizations where you know it's a rubbish procedure, spend minimal time on that. You do that anyway, you know you can get away with it, so yeah, we do that. And just try and create, up, create the time for yourself, because if you want to move to the next level or be more fulfilled, I believe that that's what we've got to do. We've got to discover, we've got to develop, we've got to embed, <sighs> becoming. That's a it's strange that you picked up on that, because that's a really, uh, highly technical term that, uh, from a couple of philosophers, which I was reluctant to put it on, but it's very meaningful. All right, I thought you were going to say five minutes. You thought I knew what I was doing. That, well, right, okay, one last question. Louder, louder. Yeah. One million percent. We have had the life proceduralized out of us. I couldn't have put it better myself, and what a perfect way to end. So on that perfect note, the people who, like you, who's jumped up here, and the people who answered questions, seriously, quickly, I need you to come to me now. Quick, quick. You, come on, if you answered a question. You, you, come on, come on, come on, or ask a question. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, quick, quick. All right, uh, just move that way or you'll be. Yeah. All right, just to finish, <laughs> on a happy note, because life can't be different than having it crunched out of us, we'll just give them a big round of applause and while we're doing it, we're applauding ourselves. Well done. <laughs> Well, thank you. All right, you're not a Last line, please do me a favor. I'll see if I... Before you leave, write anything you want on there regarding the presentation. So if it's sucked, you can see it's sucked. If you really like it, just discreetly put it on there and then tell everybody who'll listen that Michael, oh, you had to see him. Rivet soak, just keep it to yourself. All right. <laughs> Lovely to meet you all, and I hope I meet you again. Good luck. <laughs> See you later.